So far in this class, we've seen how to use the Lagrangian to treat systems moving linearly. And then we showed how to use the Lagrangian to treat systems that display simple harmonic motion. Now we'll see how we can use the Lagrangian to deal with rotation. So we'll start with uh, systems where we can convert the motion either into all linear or all rotational motion. And then we'll move on to systems that are, uh, where you have a particle that's a part of a rotating system or a, an object that's in a, an inertial reference frame, like it's sitting on the earth. Uh, so, but for right now, we'll focus on simple rotating systems. So the first example we'll look at is one we've seen before. Uh, we'll have some object that can roll down a ramp. And so let's say that this object has a moment of inertia about its center of mass of 2 fifths mr squared. So this thing has a radius r and a mass m. And the angle of this ramp we'll call phi. So if we want to treat this using Lagrangian mechanics, we want to write down our Lagrangian, which is kinetic energy minus potential energy. So to make this problem easier, I'm going to rotate my coordinate system such that the y-axis is perpendicular to the ramp and the x-axis is down the ramp. Now in this new coordinate system, I'm going to have my kinetic energy in the x direction from translational kinetic energy. And then I'll also have rotational kinetic energy. And this theta is the angle at, through which this object has rotated. And then my kinetic energy or my potential energy will be due to gravity. And then we want uh, to sign here because if we set this, or, and this should be phi, not theta. So if we set the angle of this ramp to be zero, sine of zero would be zero and we would have no potential energy, which is what we would expect. So this is, these are the two things that are going into the Lagrangian. And so when we plug those into our Lagrangian, we get something that looks like this. One half m x dot squared plus one half i theta dot squared minus mgx sine phi. Now, there's two different ways that we can approach this, and I'll show you uh, both of those paths. So the first one uh, will be to write everything in terms of x and x dot And so to do that, we know that x dot is r times theta dot, and x is r times theta. And so that's just from uh, properties of the circle. This is the arc length formula. And then if you take the time derivative of that, you get uh, the formula relating the 
velocity to the rotational velocity. Okay, so solving this for theta, because we want everything in terms of x, we get theta dot equals x dot over r and theta equals x So if we rewrite our Lagrangian, we get m x dot squared plus one half i x dot squared over r squared minus mgx sine phi. Okay, so now if I plug in our i that we were given, my Lagrangian will look like this. One half m x dot squared plus one half times two fifths m r squared x dot squared over r squared minus m g x sine phi. Okay, so now you'll see some stuff canceling. Those twos cancel. This r squared and this r squared cancel. And we're left with one half m x dot squared plus one fifth m x dot squared minus m g x sine all right, so now we have the Lagrangian that's only in terms of x and x dot. Let's simplify this a little more. One half plus one fifth is seven tenths and x dot squared minus mg x sine phi. Okay, so now we can do our Euler Lagrange equations. I guess there's only one equation here. So, looks like this. So, this left hand side, the time derivative, or for the partial derivative of mx dot squared is mx, and then you bring down the two, so this goes to seven fifths, and then you take the time derivative of that, so it gets a double dot, and on the right hand side, the derivative of mgx sine phi is just going to be mg sine phi, and so you can cancel out those m's and the velocity or the acceleration of the object rolling down the ramp will be seven fifths g sine phi. And if you up oh, not seven fifths, um, five sevenths. And so if you compare this Newtonian mechanics, you get the same answer. Okay, so that was one way of approaching that, finding the uh, translational acceleration, the linear acceleration. But now what about the angular acceleration? So to do that, we'll start with our Lagrangian that looked like this. And now instead of uh, solving this for x and x dot, we'll solve it for theta and theta dot. So uh, x dot is theta dot r and x is theta r. So plugging those all in, you get one half m theta dot squared r squared plus one half 
and again we'll be replacing the moment of inertia with its expanded form for that object. And then we replace the x with theta r sum pop. Okay. And just like we got the fraction we had before, we'll get the same one here with seven tenths. And theta dot squared r squared minus mg theta r sine phi. Okay, so now we have our Lagrangian in terms of theta dot and theta. So we can take derivatives to get our Euler Lagrange equation, which looks like this. Okay, so taking the derivative of the first term, you would get 7 fifths um, r squared theta dot, and then take time derivative of that to get double dot, and then the left-hand side, you get this should be negative Uh, you get negative m g r sine phi. So again, your m's cancel. Solving for theta dot, you get negative g over r sine phi. Because, oh, uh, negative 7 fifths, 5 sevenths. Not sure why. And so the this is the expression for the angular acceleration of the object rolling down the ramp. And you'll see that there's if you compare it to the angular term, there's this extra r factor. And so this kind of makes sense. So the larger your object is, so if you increase the radius r, you're going to be decreasing the angular acceleration. So basically, it's harder to get a bigger object uh, to roll. For some systems, you can convert the angular velocity into translational velocity or vice versa to determine the linear or rotational acceleration of the system. And then once you have that acceleration, you can solve uh, the differential equation to get the equation of motion. So in future lectures, we will deal with systems where um, it's the entire system that's rotating and so you won't be able to so easily convert from uh, all of your velocities being rotational and just converting them to translation. It will be a bit more complicated than that. This has been a Dr. Strassbau lecture. Keep the credentials. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications.